What's up everyone, it's your boy Scott. Welcome to the Scott Report, as today I'm bringing you an anime review of the Ancient Mogus' Bride, episode 13. The world of love, lore, and magic of Ancient Mogus' Bride has returned to the Scott Report, and the 12 days of anime completely derailed me from covering this series, and I really do apologize for that, because near the end of the first quarter, now, now that we are in the second half, we missed out on so many big things together, and I feel bad about that, but now we're back in, it's a priority for me to try to cover this as much as I can. But now that we're here, we can just get right to it. I really need Chisei to stop getting kidnapped. Can we stop doing that, please? This is like, what, the fifth time that someone just swooped in, took her away, the episode ends, and every time this happens, Elias just has, like, no, no, like, response to it. He assists and lets it happen. And I know that's something to do with his character because he doesn't understand emotions and things like that, but... That is beginning to run its course a little bit. I mean, we see this almost every time they run into a new adversary, but what is a little bit different about this one is the person that um, took Chise and turned her to this fox type of creature has a truly more chilling tone than anybody that we've seen take her into this type of situation before because when she used her little circle to see this person with her sight it had a completely different aura than she used to see like even when she used the sight you know these monsters they'd be covered in black they look weird but this one had like a red aura so i'm really worried that we might actually have a villain and i know we haven't this is the type of series that usually strays away from having a villain in it since Car uh, carthophilius back in that arc as it's more focused on the lore and things like that. But with this episode and, you know, the preview that we had, it looks like we might have an adversary now as we see Chisei facing down a dragon, which looks like it may be a flash forward. And at the beginning, we heard an ominous voice that has been looking, stalking, and praying on Chisei, which is probably the same person. I believe it was the exact same voice. So that adds a little bit of depth to the series. But for the most part, Ancient Mogus' Bride, even though this was like a downtime episode, it is here to make you feel good. It is here to warm your heart. And it is here to be your warmth when you're cold. And that was something very big as well with Elias. And there was just so many points in this episode that made me just say, oh, I absolutely love this series. And Chise as a character has progressed a little bit fast and a little bit more. And I'm really happy about that. That's why I'm upset that she isn't to the point where she can take care of herself yet and she keeps falling into these traps because if you look at the last episode alone before we took the week break and now we're in the second half she had got to the point where she's learning magic she's learning to start to do things on her own she got her wine and at the end of the episode she straight up turned to a phoenix and flew all the way from the land of dragons with lindale back home ready to confess her love to elias and now she just got caught in another trap again. So I don't really want to say it's backwards progression, but I am waiting on her to actually step up and do a little bit more for herself because with this episode also as well, is getting to the point where she's facing more and more danger. Like we had those little wool bee type of things. Well, we had some bad ones this episode too because it was actually one, I believe it was called a frost bug that sucks the heat from you and she said tried to fight it back with her staff but it didn't do anything and it took the heat from her ruth tried to come in use his flames to get this thing away and it just no sold it and shook it off elias had to come in and shake it down and this is something that at this point of the series we're basically at the halfway point now she say needs to um learn how to defend herself a little bit more and stop falling into these traps that's probably the only nagging thing that i have about this series but overall, this episode was about emotions, this episode was about magic, and this episode was about the teachings of both. As another moment that I absolutely loved is that Elias was saying when you were gone, when you were in the land of the dragons, I was really cold and now that you're back, I'm warm. What is that? What is this feeling? And that is of course love. He's starting to understand love. He's starting to understand emotions and Chise is bringing that out of him. And He's making her a better mage. Now, it was one part that I was a little bit, you know, I almost got up out my seat. I was ready to get up at this dude when 
you know, she said, was like, Lindell told me, you know, about your backstory and everything. And that day where you mounted me and you were this monster thing, did I, do I look tasty to you? When I first met you, do I look tasty? And Elias, you know, he rose up on her a little bit. He got like, that's not something you need to know about. He put the staff to her head. And I'm looking like, no, no, no. You're not about to touch my little sister like that. Get away. You know, get your hands away from best girl. But... This story being about love, this is one of the things that Chise also was able to show him and break down a little bit is that when you are really in love with someone, when you vow to be with someone, you have to accept the good and honestly, you have to accept the bad because everybody has a past and some people actually change from their past. As we look at Elias, he has changed. I mean, I feel a little bit better now about thinking that he was completely evil after getting his backstory, but that doesn't mean he still doesn't have the darkness there. But now with Chise being there, she's saying that I'm not afraid of you. I know the true you. I can see what's in your heart. And that was just absolutely lovely. I loved that part of the episode, especially when she said, the only thing I'm scared of is losing you. I was like, oh man, protect her. She is so best girl right now. I absolutely love the character. So that was a very good moment for the series. And Elias is now like, well, if you teach me more about these emotions, teach me how to feel. Of course, I'm gonna teach you magic. And that's where we're gonna go on our journey from here. Ancient Mox's Bride always gives us a nice, beautiful musical piece as well as Chise was just going through the motions of the day, you know, training, learning magic and things like that. And it was just absolutely silent with that same feel and love that we've come to love from this series as that was all going on. I wouldn't be upset if we got one of those every episode. So Chise still has a long way to go before she can defend herself. And something that she's also battling is trying to find the right time to tell Elias that she loves him. And it's like, just do it, girl. Just get in there and do it. That's the only way. Rip the band-aid, tell him how you feel, and just see where it goes from there. It would be no better way. But she's starting to open up with him as well as we learn about her family, where she was saying both her mother and her father had the sight. And they used to be just a really happy and loving family. Then just one day, her father left with her brother and then that's when things happened with her mom and her mom passed away and because this incident is still so shrouded in mystery i really do think there's a little bit more to that than what we're being told but the fact that she's to the point where she's talking about this that she's sharing this with elias is a big step for the character herself and that is awesome for the series and let's also talk about that opening because we can't get away without talking about it I'm not a fan of it. I'm not gonna say it's a bad song and maybe it's not fair because the first opening was so good that anything that comes after is just not gonna stand up. But I, I wasn't really a fan of the opening. It seems like the type of thing that would grow on me later. And I wonder if it's because this was the first episode of the core, but the opening was actually just like a recap of season one. So you could like watch the opening and get a gist of pretty much everything that went on almost. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. Maybe they're waiting because most of the time we don't even get the opening until the second episode. So maybe things will be a little bit better with that. The ending thing was okay too. I mean, it just knocked the ball out the park with both the opening and the ending the first time. Now, it was going to be hard to top that anyway. But yeah, we end on another cliffhanger as this person shows up. I believe his name was Asher I or, or something, something I. I'm sorry, I don't remember right now. But he came in, you know, and he put like this fox thing around Chise and said, basically, this is for enslaving my people. So he turned up to this fox. Elias, of course, is sitting there looking. He was enraged, but it didn't look like he was going to do anything. So we'll just have to see. Of course, according to the preview, it looks like she's going to be fine. I wonder how that's going to turn out. And Ancient Moxie's Bride is back, and I am glad it is back. Welcome back, and again, I apologize for dropping so many episodes. Please forgive me, but I'm going to try to cover as many episodes as I can from here. So I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. If you liked the video, go ahead and drop me a like. And if you want to hear more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. There's not a shortage of content for your indulge on this channel. As I always say, you guys can be anywhere on YouTube right now, but you chose to listen to me. I really appreciate that, so thanks for stopping by. On that note, it's your boy Scott signing out. See you soon.